you see every year that we, we just become more of a, a diverse melting pot, which uh, is something that can't, couldn't be said about the, some of the classes, the earlier classes, um, the ones from back in previous generations. The, the increase of diversity at the Academy has been something that is, is a, a major change from previous generations. The first African-American entered the Naval Academy in 1872 during the Reconstruction. A black member of Congress nominated James Conyers. He was followed by Edwin Baker Jr. and Alonzo Clifton McClellan. None were welcomed by the all-white brigade. The first five black midshipmen were unmercifully hazed, assaulted, and driven out during their first year. And so the midshipmen, when they saw the likes of Conyers, uh, McClellan, and the others who followed, they actually even resented the very presence of them being at their school, air quotes, um, that they would even think that they belong there or that they could deserve to be there. Through the rest of Reconstruction and the period of Jim Crow that followed, the few black midshipmen admitted to the academy were driven out by their fellow midshipmen. How do you do that? You do that through beatings, you do that through verbal abuse, you do that through emotional, physical, mental, and verbal abuse of different kinds. Between 1872 and 1945, no black midshipman made it past plebe year until Wesley Brown of the class of 1949. Brown received the same harsh treatment as his predecessors, but had the respect of a few white midshipmen, including James Earl Carter, class of 46 of Georgia, a cross-country teammate and upperclassman mentor. My primary memory of him is that he was always judged on by his performance, and he always crossed the finish line ahead of me. A few members of my senior class attempted to find ways to give him demerits so that he would be discharged, but Brown's good performance prevailed. Brown's graduation and successful naval career opened the way for African Americans who wanted to pursue careers as naval officers, and little by little, it sowed the seeds of change at the U.S. Naval Academy. Over the next few decades, the Naval Academy produced black officers of distinction who made outstanding contributions to their nation. But it took time and the efforts of courageous people for the institution to change. When I got here, it was really tough. Uh, I didn't think uh, people necessarily wanted me here. There were seven blacks in my class of about 12 to 1400. By 1970, when midshipman Kenneth Dunn arrived on the yard, the motivation for animosity from upperclassmen was not always apparent. If some of those, if some of that animosity was pointed towards me because I was black, it was hard to tell because the guy next to me was getting it, the guy over here was getting it, this guy behind me was getting it. It wasn't like I was singled out. Was there some uh, discrimination? Uh, yes, was it reflected in, uh, in some of my aptitude reports at, at the time? Uh, but uh, by and large, I found that if, uh, if folks saw that you were hustling and that you were trying to do the, do the right things, is that over time they respected that and tried to help you out. For decades, there was little progress. It took 103 years for the Academy to graduate 100 African-American officers. Progress was aided by Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, who as Chief of Naval Operations, enacted policies designed to improve the lives of enlisted personnel and ease racial tension, policies that had lasting effect. But what he did as CNO from 1970 to 74, we didn't see the real fruit of for some time after his tenure. There was more progress in 1976 when Mason Chuck Reddick became the first black brigade commander. The year also brought new challenges. For the first time, the incoming class of 1980 included women. Among them was a single African-American woman, Janie Mines. I was not at all ready for the level of, let's call it reluctance, of the Naval Academy to accept women and to particularly accept me. A gifted student with many higher education options, Janie Mines was always mindful of her role in history at the Naval Academy. People would say things that would let me know that they were relying on me to complete the task, to represent, 
women and minority women well. So, and I even had a little old lady out in town come up to me and very, very old lady and tell me, she said, baby, you know you can't quit, don't you? So that just stayed in my mind. And yes, um, I did feel extra pressure. By 1990, when Ahmed Williamson entered the Naval Academy class of 1994, he believes it was a more level playing field where all midshipmen had to prove themselves worthy and up to the task. So what I had to do is, through all the hard work that I had done to prepare to be at the Naval Academy, making sure that I was morally, mentally, and physically uh, fit and prepared, I needed to make sure I brought my best self. I needed to understand that in, within that environment, black, white, Hispanic, whatever the ethnic background was, male or female, uh, you know, north, south, east, or west, wherever where folks were coming from, uh, that I was gonna be able to be able to present my best self and not let anyone dissuade me from my goal, not let anyone tell me any differently. Over time, the diversity of the brigade continued to increase with greater participation by men and women of all racial and ethnic groups who had the benefit of the example set by graduates who distinguished themselves in their military and civilian careers. If you want to make change, if you want to have a diverse officer corps, you just have to have the will to do it. That will was there in the 70s when President Carter was president, when President Reagan was president. I think that will needs to return today. There needs to be a re-emphasis on diversifying the Naval Academy, not for the sake of diversity, but to make sure it's a representative, excellent talent pool for future officers to lead our diverse Navy and Marine Corps. The way that I would characterize the Naval Academy today is very forward-leaning. Um, it's, it's a place where new ideas are coming in. It's starting to become a lot more diverse, um, just with the increasing the number of women who come to the Academy, the number of um, minorities across all dem demographics. And thanks to those who came before, going back more than 150 years, the nation is stronger protected by the best and brightest men and women who choose to begin their journey at the United States Naval Academy. Hip, hip!